Hello everybody, welcome to the Mustard Seed Leadership Podcast. We are starting a brand new eight-part series which I'm super excited about and uh, something God has been speaking to me about, challenging me about, something that we've been journeying on as a church. And I've called it the biggest kingdom leadership requirement, which is a big statement, the biggest kingdom leadership requirement. And it comes out of that famous passage I've used many times before, but we're going to be highlighting and zeroing in on just one aspect. In Acts chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the Word. This is going back to first principles. This is the first example in the New Testament of them looking for leaders. This is before Paul wrote the requirements for eldership where he spoke about different characteristics and character requirements. This is right back at the beginning when they're choosing their first leaders and they zeroed in and say, choose men who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. Full of the Spirit and wisdom means the practical application of that into your lifestyle decisions. So I'm going to be zeroing in on the most important leadership requirement publicly is are you full of the Holy Spirit? And so, eight-week series on how to practically live a lifestyle full of the Holy Spirit. Now, I've been on a little bit of a journey, as I've said, and I mean, I'm convinced about the need for leadership. That's why I teach this Mustard Seed Leadership Podcast. Hopefully, that's why you listen to it, because you're convinced as well. Leadership is important for churches, for businesses, for communities, for families, leaders who have vision, leaders who can bring about change and transformation, who are courageous, who can build teams, who can carry responsibility, who can make things happen. God looks for leaders. Whenever God wants to do something, He goes looking for a leader. This is why leadership is so important. I've devoted so much of my time, effort, and energy to to learn and to study and to teach it. But I've come to a couple of discoveries. Discoveries number one, for a kingdom leader to be effective, they must be full of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the more full of the Holy Spirit you are, the better leader that you are going to be. You might have leadership skills and abilities and knowledge, but without the fullness of the Holy Spirit, your effectiveness is always going to be limited. On the flip side, you might be new to this leadership thing, but full of the Holy Spirit, led by the Spirit, you're going to be a great leader. Second discovery, recently I was talking about teamwork to a church recently, and I had a bit of a penny-dropping moment, and I came to this conclusion, for a church body to be effective, it needs to be full of the Holy Spirit. It says in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13, where Paul was speaking about we're a body, we all have different functions, but he says, for we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. I love that picture because it's almost as if we as a body, we might have all the functions and abilities, but if a body is dehydrated, it becomes lethargic and it just wants to do nothing. And I wonder how many of our church bodies are dehydrated because we're not drinking of the Spirit. So the big idea, effectiveness both individually and as a church body is based on this one requirement. Are you full of the Holy Spirit? So that's the series challenge. How can we design a lifestyle around constantly drinking of the Holy Spirit. This is not going to be a theory type of series. This is going to be super practical. Designing a lifestyle, building habits and routines into our lives to ensure that we live full of the Spirit. Now, I think that's what the early church got right. We hear about in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit's been poured out and 3,000 are added. And then remember that famous verse in Acts 2 verse 42. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. It's beautiful how this lifestyle of devotion became a lifestyle of discipline to these four things that are mentioned here, which I think was a devoted lifestyle which constantly kept filling them of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to study some of those. And the result, verse 47, it says, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. This church was living a practical lifestyle of constantly being filled with the Spirit and so the church continued to grow and expand. Big idea. Devoted life is more powerful than a disciplined life. Discipline should follow devotion and their devotion to Jesus led to a lifestyle, to a disciplined lifestyle of constantly drawing and drinking from the Spirit. Let me give you two examples of this. Remember Daniel, Old Testament example. Here was a man, out of his devotion to the Lord, 
It turned into discipline for the Lord. I don't want us to just zero in. He has seven ways to practically be filled with the Holy Spirit. First, we've got to catch the heart of it, which is devotion. Out of devotion flows discipline. So let's not focus on the disciplines as much as the devotion, and then the disciplines will follow. For example, in Daniel 1 verse 8, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. It was out of his devotion to the Lord that grew this discipline about what he's going to eat or not eat. I love that. Another example in Daniel 6 verse 10 where he was now ordered to bow down and worship the statue and it says, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Lifestyle of discipline flowed out of his devotion to the Lord. And that's going to be the challenge. How can we turn our love for Jesus into a practical lifestyle centered around living full of the Holy Spirit? Jesus, of course, uh, did this beautifully in Mark chapter 1 verse 35, very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. This was after a late night of ministry. Yet his love, his devotion to his father led to a disciplined lifestyle. Jesus' devotion to his father reflected in his daily discipline. So over the next seven weeks now, we're going to dive into seven fruit of devotion, those, those seven disciplines. But remember, it's not about discipline, it's about devotion. But how could we design a lifestyle around living lives full of the Holy Spirit? So to get us started, I've got you three questions that I want you to ponder either individually or do it as your team. But I want you to think through these things. Number one, consider your basic lifestyle routines and habits. How many of them actively fill you with the Holy Spirit? Now, not all habits are good, not all habits are bad, but we want to, into our lifestyle, begin to add more habits that are filling us and not just habits that are draining us. Question number two, if you had to rate how full of the Holy Spirit you feel right now out of 10, what would you give yourself? Now remember, that's going to be the challenge. Biggest requirement for leadership is fullness of the Holy Spirit. So where are you at now? How full of the Holy Spirit do you feel? And then question number three, describe what your life could look like if you were double as full of the Holy Spirit as you are used to. And that's what's been challenging me. I'm used to a level of what I would consider, yeah, of course I'm full of the Holy Spirit. What if that was doubled? What would I be doing differently in my life if I was full to overflowing? So that's where we're going with the next seven weeks ahead of us. I can't wait to journey through each of these disciplines and talk about how I'm trying to implement them in my life. I hope you'll join me for that journey. So until next week, God bless and bye for now. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Remember, if you'd like the notes that come along with this episode or any one of our past episodes, you can visit outlookchurch.co.za forward slash mustard seed leadership. You can see all our past episodes, all the resources and notes that go along with this. Until next time, keep growing.